Hi there and welcome, especially to those who are new here. I'm Catherine. I live in Canada, about 90 minutes east of Toronto, on the north shore of Lake Ontario in, in a nice little town. Um, I'm doing a little bit of work in experiment number two today. So I thought I'd bring you along and then I thought I might show you um, the next journal I'm going to work on. This one will go into my Etsy shop. This one um, stays with me. Uh, let's see. I counted the pages and there are 220 pages in this journal. Some of you were a little worried that there was no little Catherine um, bookmark. And you're right. Isn't it funny how we think of others <laughs> and, and not ourselves? So uh, I couldn't not put a little Catherine in here, even though the, the, the big one's staring right at me as soon as you open it up. It's sort of, hi there. <laughs> now, where is she? She's in here. There she is. The two Nanas are in there. I left the back blank. I just used some lined paper and I did a little stenciling of some faux uh, mucky mess. And uh, if you're new here, the two Nana's bookmarks, I put one in every book that I create. And uh, this lady on this side is my Nana. The, the lovely lady that we always knew as Nana in our family, although we really didn't get to see much of her. She lived way over on the other coast of Canada, over in um, British Columbia. So I have very few memories of her in person, um, but I have memories of her on the phone. And I always recognized her voice. Uh, and she was, this is my mom, and uh, this, my mom also chose to go by Nana when she had grandchildren. So she's, my children know her as Nana. So I just call them the two Nanas. <laughs> two Nanas bookmark. And uh, I've already started doing some writing in my journal. Um... I tend, to, I made it to give me ideas, but I also want to be able to put quotes in it that I find particularly uplifting. So where is it that I wanted to work today? I wanted to put an eyelet in this little cloth tag. So... Let's get out the crocodile and let's get out some eyelets and I need, uh, I need some paper. Okay, so found a little piece. It, uh, it's garbage day in my neighborhood. <laughs> So, if you hear noise in the background, it could very well be the truck. Sometimes, um, the crocodile doesn't like chomping just through fabric. So if you put a piece of paper, or in this case, it was a little leftover chunk of file folder around it temporarily, just hold it in place, uh, it'll chomp through better. 
and then uh, and then you'll be good. See what I mean? Some of those threads want to hang on. So we'll just trim those and then we've got our eyelet hole. I decided yesterday to have a camera free Monday. Today's Tuesday while I'm recording and you'll be seeing it on Wednesday. So in case you're thinking, hold on, what day is it? Um, <laughs> It is. I'm recording Tuesday. You're viewing on Wednesday. There we go. Put a little eyelet in there. Switch out. I almost thought my crocodile was uh, broken the other day. These little twisty things seem quite precarious and uh, I will be interested to see how long. Oh, I almost did. Remember that one time I punched right through? Let's try again. This is a deep eyelet, and I'm wondering what it was meant for. There we go. I felt it crunch. <laughs> it was that final. <clears throat> it's like when you're cutting up a chicken for making soup. There we go. That's better. I don't mind that it splits. That's fine. Um, I'll be interested to see how long my crocodile lasts it's done it's done well so far i highly recommend investing in a crocodile and that's a p in it not a, not a c it's not a crocodile it's a crocodile so you can chomp on things and put in eyelets and a very good investment if you think junk journaling is your kind of thing um it's, uh, it's a good investment. Now I want rusty bulb pins. Did that show up? There we go. When I open this thing, I always sort of open it away from me because dust comes out. <laughs> they are rusty. There we go. Doesn't bother me. Sometimes I coat them, especially if I'm going to be sending them off to new homes. But if it's just for me, I use them as is. I've had this there we go for a while now and she's finally going to have a home it's just a wire uh, wine glass charm Oh, you need to be flatter. All right, all right. I can accommodate you. There we go. I'll save these. I'll get put onto a safety pin or something for another project. I only want the little sun. So yesterday, on my camera-free day, I've been refilling all my fountain pens. 
Um, I spent the day, I decided it was Ladies Day on Spotify, and I, I have a playlist of um, all the vocalists are, and performers are women in this playlist, and I just thought, it's Ladies Day for me. For my camera free day. All right. Wire is metal. It can go in recycling. All right. I have to go through the list in my head of what our area recycles. They're all different. Uh, depending on what region you live in, where I live. Oh, that little. That little fellow looks nice there. I'm happy. Okay. Now, I think I want to put a quote in for today. I don't think that's the best place for My two nanas bookmark. Um, I did put a pocket in. Let's put you in the pocket for now. Nanas, you're going in there. There, you can peek out the top. Excellent. And I think I want it right there. So, I, I have a... Um, Word document. That uh, I just save quotes that appeal to me and speak to me. And I just pull it up and add to it when I see one that I want darker. That paper's dark. Walnut. Where are you, Walnut? Walnut. You are the one for the job. Um, so I think what I will do is slowly Start transferring the quotes from my quote file. Over here into this book. There we go. Much better. So I need to pull it up on my screen, the one that I want to do today. And I find I need to write it out first in my own handwriting. So that I know how big it's going to be so that I can adjust it to the size that I want it to fit onto. And I want it to fit onto here, and then I'm going to glue it onto here. And there's going to be no rhyme or reason to where I put my quotes when I put them into my book. So, today's quote is from Joni Mitchell. See, that's why it's good to do it first. I find 
writing first thing in the morning is hard for me. Sometimes my hand is still stiff. There's no period. Don't worry, I'll read it to you. So, and then I want to give credit where credit is due. So she said, I had to become a warrior had to give up hope and find a substitute for hope that would be far more stable. I loved that. So I'm looking at this and I'm going to have to write smaller than what my hand wants to write. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to need my pencil liner. And then I can erase these later. after the ink has dried. And hope I've got enough room. These are cool. You can order these on, um, I got mine on Amazon. <laughs> Where else? During the during COVID, for when I was writing in books that had no lines, I learned this from Bree over at, is it 1138 Press? I'll find out and put the link below. I enjoy her channel very much. She tends to only post about once a month, but I, I really enjoy her channel. So if this how I've written it out. One, two, three, four, five, six lines and then seven. One, two, three, four, five, six lines, space and seven. So I do have space. I could start on the second line. And then I need to write much smaller. Let's come down closer. Let's see if she had a period after that. She did. Period. Had to give up hope. and 
and find a hot oh boy. Substitute just fit for hope. That would be far more stable. Johnny Mitchell. I don't believe these are I don't believe these are lyrics from a song. I believe that I was reading an interview from her, on her, by her, with her, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> now, I want, uh, I want a little bit of faux cellophane tape. Uh, plastic. That will give time for this to dry so I can erase my pencil lines. I just want a couple of small pieces. So now I need to remember where I put them. One. I don't push them down too hard because I want to be able to remove them a little easier. And then for now, I'm using, let's see, cafe au lait, or else latte. A drop. We have a little time, but not too much, so I don't. Don't go get yourself a latte while you're making cellophane tape. Faux cellophane tape. <laughs> Fortunately, it'll dry quite quickly. I really like getting underneath that rigidy edge because it will dry darker. So sometimes I'll even pick at it and get some ink underneath it. There we go. All right. Usually I have, oh, I hate when I, I have this on crooked and it's like one of those child proof Tops that are also like senior proof. <laughs> Child proof and senior proof. <laughs> in case those of us who are in our 60s think about drinking our alcohol ink. <laughs> All right, now, normally I would use my nice, soft, kneadable eraser. And it is in my watercolor gear bag that is buried in my closet across the room. So I'm just going to be trying try and be gentle. Wish me luck. Try and be gentle with this e eraser. It's, it's quite soft. This is, uh, I just used a uniball pen, so it's permanent. Looks like we're having success. I got to thinking, if I handwrite all these quotes in this book of mine, and then someday I go over the Rainbow Bridge, 
I really hope I do so I can see all my pets again. Um, I wonder if pet lovers get to go over the Rainbow Bridge too. If you don't know what I'm talking about, most pet lovers know about the Rainbow Bridge, but if you don't know about it, Google search poem, the Rainbow Bridge. You'll start crying, so prepare yourself. There we go. Something this simple shouldn't be so. Takes so much effort, but it's relaxing. Yeah, my little needable eraser. I need my needle. Neater, needable eraser. I want this a little bit more. Just wherever there isn't writing, because I really squeezed that on there. <laughs> I feel somebody underfoot. She's telling me it's L-U-N-C-H time. There we go. Walnut, where are you? Let's just make sure. That's better. Oh, see, now I forget whether I got off topic. So I often wonder if someday down the road, after I've gone over the Rainbow Bridge, fingers crossed, um, that um, whether my own grandchildren and great-grandchildren will be able to read these. <laughs> With, without an interpreter, <laughs> because they're not teaching cursive writing in schools anymore. So I wonder... I wonder if it will be as difficult for them as sometimes I find old-fashioned writing trying to make it out. Like for example, when I used to do transcribing, actually for Ancestry.com, and uh, some of the way they used to write, their S's looked like our letter F. So you had to take in the whole word to see whether they were, whether it was an S you were reading or an F you were reading. Um, because of the style of handwriting and how it's evolved, I'm just going to try and wrinkle that a little bit. Yeah. This will be dry now. Now for now, I'm just going to tape it down. In just a sort of haphazard way. I just give it a pat. If you push too hard or wipe too hard, you can wipe the alcohol ink right off your tape. I like 
like that. Let's move the piles down for now. Piles doesn't have to stay there. That's the beauty of uh, movable piles. I like how that turned out. Okay, so I can I can take a quote off of my list of quotes and uh, and do another one another time. All right, now I want to do one last little thing. I want to explain something. One last thing before I go. Um, I've had a few people ask about this. So I'm going to re-angle my camera so that you can see what I'm talking about. And I'll explain what the question was and hopefully um, show you what I mean. I decided I can do it here. I'm going to back up a bit. I'm going to get you to imagine that this brick, my handy dandy brick, if you don't have a brick, go to your local garden center, get yourself two bricks. You won't regret it. And here in Canada, where our dollar is horrible right now, they're not very expensive. They're less than a dollar. Um, here is the next little book that I'll be working on. It's so pretty and it's in lovely condition. It's from 1885. I've already got started on it. Let's get those out of there. So I've had a few people ask when it's time to put the new text block in, the one that you've created. How do you keep these nice grooves in there? Or say you fortified, in this case I'm not going to, this book, that cloth is in very nice condition. And by the time I add a second layer of cloth with my text block, it will be quite well supported. But if it was falling apart such that I needed to put cloth in there, and you want your spine to remember its beautiful shape. Avoid the temptation of starting to cut your text block into uh, getting the folios out, cutting open the signatures and pulling out folios. I've done it. It's so exciting when you're going to start a new book and it's got beautiful pages in it and you just, oh, I can't wait. And you start pulling out pages and before you know it, your text block is in pieces before you have finished your cover. So keep your text block together while you work on your cover. So let's put our imagination caps on. Let's imagine this was in terrible condition. I have to fortify my spine again because it's so thin I can see through it when I hold it up to the window. I've had to put down some very thin gauze here or whatever it is you've chosen to uh, reinforce with. Usually I use PVA to do that. It's a water-based glue. So what's going to happen is your hinges and that beautiful little line there is going to want to relax and go flat and go oh finally after hundreds of years i'm just going to lay flat and no 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 we don't want it to lay flat we want this lovely mushroom shape that has been hammered into place so long ago by someone working at a bookbinder's shop so what you're going to do is you're going to do your work. You're going to lay in there either a piece of plastic or parchment paper or waxed paper. Any of those will do and lay it in there. Then you're going to take your text block and you're going to put it right back into that. You're going to saddle it right back into your spine and you're going to pinch it around and give it some nice pinches along this groove here to get it to remember, oh yeah, I guess I need to be groovy. And you're going to pinch that groove, pinch that groove. And then here's where I'm using my brick. You can use the edge of a table if you want. 
marry up the edge of the book, that spine, to the edge of the brick. If you need to, you could use another book, a big book. I'd turn it around. Don't use the spine side. Use this side. And then you're going to put your second brick, so there it is, hanging over the edge, and you're going to put your second brick right close to the top there, and you're going to put pressure on it so that it remembers. If you need to, pull it back, pinch, 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 pinch while it's still damp, get it to remember, and then move your brick right close to that edge. And you're going to leave it like that, turn your lights out, and go watch TV for the evening and go to bed. And in the morning you'll get up and you'll have a lovely shaped spine that's all nice and dry. And you'll be able to remove either your books or your brick and, uh, and take your text block out. And then you'll be able to uh, have a beautifully shaped um, spine. Now when it comes time to do your own text block, a little bit trickier because our homemade text blocks are not as dense. See how this one, there's just not as many pages as there is in this book. They're not packed. I'm not a professional book binder, nor do I want to be. I want a junk journal, not a professional book. So this is where you're going to have to saddle your new text block in and you're going to pinch it and put it in and pinch, but you're still going to do this part the same. You're still going to hang your the spine part where the hinge is over the edge either of your table or the edge of a book that's turned around. And then you're going to get your other brick or your other book and you're going to put it on top to the edge pinch 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 be gentle if you're working with really old fabric I have pinched my fingers right through the fabric and had to change my plans <laughs> usually shabby chic it or something so do it do your pinching gently and uh, and then again turn out the lights and walk away because it's going to need time to dry thoroughly. So that way it is, um, this part is left to remember to curve and to remember to um, keep that nice little denty hinge that you want. That's why it's handy and it's taking everything I've got not to get into this text block. Um, because I'm going to need it for a little while while um, I make sure that I'm happy with that spine the way it is. So I hope that makes sense. If there's any questions, ask them below. I'll try and clarify my mixy uppy jumpy aroundy explanation. I'm not the best teacher in the world. And even though I homeschooled my kids and they all did very well in life, uh, going to college and university and all those wonderful things, eventually, um, I'm not the world's best teacher. <laughs> uh, because, I guess because I'm a visual learner, um, it's easier for me to show someone while I'm doing it than it is to try and explain it abstractly. Have a great rest of your day. I'm not sure when I'll be in touch again. Um, tomorrow we have our very important tests for uh, Kirby. So wish us luck. Keep us in your hearts. Keep Kirby in your hearts. And uh, let's hope for, uh, for a good word from our vet. Um, so take care. We'll talk soon. Bye.